Business can be a lonely game, but it doesn't have to be. Welcome to Boutique Chat, where we explore community over competition and how to scale your company with the balance and the happiness that we all seek. We'll hear from product-based businesses of all types, retailers, e-commerce and wholesale brands, along with industry experts shaping the future of our industry. I'm your host, Ashley Alderson from the Boutique Hub, and I can't wait to chat. Okay, guys, I am so excited for you to listen to this week's episode. Make sure you bring a notebook because you're definitely going to want to take notes. If you have had any curiosity around Facebook ads, whether you're brand new to Facebook ads or you're using an agency or maybe you're running your own ads and you just want to scale it a little bit greater, Facebook ads is just such a moving target. There's always something to know. There's always a new strategy. There's always a new angle. So today I'm so excited. I'm bringing in our director of marketing, Jeff Fenn. Many of you already know him inside of the Boutique Hub and Retail Boot Camp and Boutique Hub Black. He is a master when it comes to Facebook ads and really all paid traffic that comes to Google and all kinds of SEO strategies on top of it. Today, we're breaking down everything you need to know on Facebook ads when it comes to misconceptions people have, budget issues people have, when to know you're ready, whether you're an online store or a brick and mortar, how can you break down the ad funnel to put it into use in your business? And when do you know if you find an awesome agency to run it? And when do you know if you take it in house and run it? We're going to talk about that today as well. So get ready, bring a notebook. We're going to, we're going to go in depth. So let's Let's do this. Meet my friend Jeff and our director of marketing here at the Boutique Hub. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast this week. I've got a familiar face around here. I don't even know what to call you anymore. Uh, it was the marketing unicorn. Now it's like Mr. Leopard Pants. I, you've got many aliases around the Boutique Hub, I believe. That's true, actually. Um, my trend finally caught on after five years. Leopard pants are in this season. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. Did you? I tagged you on Instagram the other day. I keep seeing leopard pants videos, and I know boutique owners keep seeing them and sending them your way. So for those of you who don't know yet, uh, Jeff Fenn is our director of marketing here at the Boutique Hub, and ads and paid traffic are one of his specialties. So we're going to deep dive into it today. But the funny part is, as you teach on ads and traffic and, and all marketing topics, really, Leopard pants are always your analogy, always what you're searching for and teaching on. So nice to see that come full yeah. circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're an important part to any wardrobe. As a matter, matter of fact, you wouldn't believe how many pairs I have that have been sent to me. I've never worn a pair, I don't think. But the, uh, <laughs> but the, the, uh, um, the uh, um, um, you know, people do have a tendency to send them to me. You ha people have actually sent you leopard pants? Yeah. I think you need to like lay them all out and take a picture of them and put this in the hub. Maybe, perhaps, perhaps that seems like something more that one of our team members would do. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, let's dig in. So I'm pumped that you're on the podcast today. And for today, we're going to hone in specifically on ads because man, there's, there's always questions on ads every single day in the hub from when is it right to run my own ads? Um, should I hire an agency to run my ads or I've been using an agency and I want to take my ads back in house, but ads are such a moving target. You know, every time you log in, it seems like something's different on the back end of Facebook. And so it seems like it's a lot to keep up with. And I think sometimes just the overwhelming nature of it can stop people before they start. So hopefully today we can kind of dig in and, and take some of that mystery away for everyone. So let's start here. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions and misnomers when it comes to running ads. So let's debunk a few things to get started. So how would you say, um, you know, when someone's evaluating, am I even ready to run ads and people disqualify themselves? What would you say? How do you know when you're ready to actually start running ads? Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is one of the most common questions I see amongst um, new retailers, new boutique owners, new um, home and gift store owners is like, first of all, do I need ads? Like, will my business grow organically without paid promotion? Like, can I, can I um, create a social media uh, page and, and, and following that will support my business enough to like realize my income? stream dreams. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to write that, but that's kind of, <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so like, uh, and so anyway, so anyway, so, you know, will it, will it work or, you know, like is organic traffic enough? Do I need ads? And then if I do decide that, you know, it's probably a good option, am I ready? And so on, on the first side, on the first uh, part of that, 
you know, unfortunately, in 2012, 2011, when Facebook first launched and people were just starting to get into it, it was not a pay to play platform. Mm -hmm. You could get on there, you could create a really great following. Um, the people who engaged with your brand and your store saw your posts and saw your live sales and saw your your products. And, you know, they were always seeing your stuff and you didn't have to pay. Like you didn't have to pay to make sure that um, people saw, you know, your items. And then we transitioned into this, you know, kind of a group method to increase that visibility again. And so we created custom buyer groups and VIP groups um, to increase that visibility again. But even that has tapered off. Yeah. Um, you know, in the recent years, uh, visibility within the groups. And so, uh, you know, my, my theory on can you grow a viable online um, new customer acquisition stream or a new product sales stream organically alone, I would just say you can, but it's very difficult and it takes a long time. And so ads offer us the opportunity to speed that up and get in front of more people instantly, but it's pay to play. And so, um, you know, like Facebook, this was always their intention is to become, you know, the largest advertising platform in the world. And they are, they are, you know, and they, and they are by far. And so 94% of Facebook's income comes from ads. Wow. Like they, they don't make money doing anything else. And mm -hmm. Google's the same way. 90 some percent of Google income comes from ads. That's, that's how they make money. And so that was their intention. And so my recommendation would be if you really want to reach more people, if you really want to find new shoppers, if you want to get your brand in front of new eyeballs, whether it's local to come in through your front door or whether it's national to just come on your site and buy, ads are a really great way to do it faster. It's possible organically, um, but but it takes a, a, lot, a, a lot of work and you're going to have to stick to it long term. And it, it takes a ton of discipline. Ads are fast and um, and they're more instantly gratifying. Now, the second side of that is you've decided, okay, I want to speed up the growth of my business. I want to get in front of more new sets of eyeballs faster. Mm -hmm. Am I ready? Like, is my meta business manager account, is my Facebook page, is my Instagram page, is my website, is my store ready to attract, you know, 250 people on a Saturday to walk through the front door? Or is my website ready to... Um, show my brand to 5,000 new people a week. Um, and so that, that's, a, that's a complicated question. And so I can, I can give you a few tips um, to just like a few checklist items to make sure that you're ready. And um, it really comes down to just a few things. And so um, the first part is the relationship, like the, 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 um, you know, how, how complete your meta business suite is filled out. Like, have you gone through every single tab in meta business suite and made sure that your, your meta business suite access is set up correctly to the right people. And you have a protective person in there. You have a security person in there. There's only in there to help you get your account back. If it comes back, have you gone through meta business suite and made sure that your ad account is linked and your commerce account is linked and your pixel is linked and you know, and, and all of that stuff. And have you gone through there and make sure your payment details are correct. So is your meta business account 100% complete? If you don't know what meta business is and you haven't been through every tab, you're not quite ready. <laughs> so that's check mark. That's check mark. Number one, number two comes down to tracking. So, so your pixel tracking. And so, as online store owners, a lot of times there's this there's this um, there's this idea that um, if we have a website, people will come and they'll buy. But like, is your website ready? Like, is your online presence ready? Like, do you have pixel tracking on your website, Google and Facebook both? And is your like is your website continuous with your brand? Like, are you a pink bubbly, uh, you know, person that walks around with a jean jacket and a great big logo of your business on the back, or are are, you know, are you something else? Like, are you more serious than that? And so, and so like, you know, like you have to ask yourself, that's an inside joke. <laughs> but anyway, so, the, uh, so uh, but um, are you ready? Are you ready, you know, to send a bunch of traffic to your people? And, and it comes down to two things. Like, do you have tracking in place? Are you able to see who's coming to your page? And is your page on brand? Is it you? Does it reflect who you are? Because people are going to buy from you. They're not going to buy from your brand. 
they're going to, they're going to see one of your live videos or they're going to see one of your promotional videos and they're going to go, Oh, I like her. I like, exactly. she's like me. She reminds me of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to her page and see, see what, see what she has. And then if your page doesn't remind them of you, they're going to, they're going to, they call them, they call it dropping people off a cliff. <laughs> so like so true. you push them all, you take, you take them all the way to the edge. And then when they hit your site, your site doesn't remind them of your personality and you drop them off a cliff. You never yeah. hear from them again. So, and then like one other thing just to keep in mind is like when you start running traffic to your page like that, mm -hmm. um, you'll have this huge group of people that hit your page. Do you have a method to not only resell to that small percentage that buy right off the bat, but stay in touch with that huge percentage that doesn't buy? And that's where like the pixel and all that stuff comes into play. So that's step number two. So number one is, do you have an in-depth relationship with Meta Business Manager? You got to get to know it really well. <clears throat> you should know it well. Mm -hmm. um, number two is, you know, is, you know, is your website, is your entire online experience on brand? Do, does it remind your customer of you, your personality, who you are, your tone, that sort of thing? Like, yeah. is that experience continuous throughout? And then uh, <clears throat> number three is basically, do you have the money? Like, do you have, like, have you set away, ha, ha, like in the previous year, did you think, okay, next year I'm going to allocate 20% of my funds to advertising, to grow in my business. And, um, and you know, when I, when I get ready to get in, when I get ready to start really promoting my business and really start uh, promoting my business nationally, do I have the funds to make that successful? Because when you first launch ads, right, <clears throat> when you first launch them, usually right there at first, they take off pretty good. Mm -hmm. They get going pretty quick, but if you don't have extra funds to fuel that fire and keep that upward trajectory going, it'll fizzle out and you'll think, man, ads don't work for me. Oh, I, I could never get them to convert after those first couple sales because Facebook is like a hungry dog, right? Like, so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you first get a puppy and you feed it one cup of food and before you know it, you're feeding it three. And before you know it, you're feeding it six. And before you know it, it eats the whole bag while you're gone at work for the day. And so like <laughs> Facebook is like, Facebook is like that, right? And so we have to have enough funds to be able to fuel the rocket all the way to the stratosphere. And so just ask yourself, you know, do I have mm -hmm. an extra 500 bucks a month? Do I have an extra thousand bucks a month? Do I have an extra 1500 bucks a month to spend on ads? And it, it, if the answer is no, you know, it, if, if right now you're, you, you are, you know, you're cutting the margins down to a half a percent, that's okay. Like a lot of us have been there and like a lot of us are there now, mm -hmm. but, and that's okay. Margins get tight times and there's other options. Um, there's other organic options that don't respond quite as fast and things like Google perspectives that will pump traffic to your site, um, that, 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 it, that are ideal for you. But, um, yeah. if your margins are super tight, you're not quite ready. Can we talk about that for a second longer, just the budget? So what is your thoughts on the ability to start some things on $5 a day? Like what is a realistic yeah. budget to start? What should people be planning for when it comes to ad spend? Okay. So the $5 a day budget is uh, very specific to one strategy. Okay. And so I advise a lot of times for people to start at five or $10 a day. And that is for what we call a rapid testing cycle. And so um, you might start an ad um, you, so, so, so say I did a live last night for, mm -hmm. um, blue hats and blue hoodies, right? That's my collection. And, uh, see, I'm diversifying. That wasn't, leopard it wasn't leopard anyway, so, uh, yeah. 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 And so, so say I did a live sale last night and, um, I didn't quite have as many attendees on there as I wanted. Yeah. And I bought two packs of each and I only sold through half a pack on my live. So I have one and a half packs left of each. And, um, and I need to sell those things. Like I know that once spring hits, hoodies aren't selling and I need to sell them. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the recording of that live. I'm going to load it up into an ad campaign and I'm going to start it out at $5 a day. Right. And so that $5 a day, that $5 a day is only for what we call rapid testing. And so that's for the first 48 to 72 hours of the campaign. And all I'm watching for during that time is I'm spending five bucks a day. So I'm gonna spend 15 bucks to test it. And if my click through rate comes in above 3%, I've hedged my bet. I've mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm relatively sure that's the fastest horse in the, you know, on the starting line, I'm gonna bet on that one. 
And so then I say, okay, my click through rate is 3%. I'm prepared to spend more as soon as my first sale comes in. But um, that $5 a day is only for that preliminary period. So just don't think that you're going to become a millionaire off of $5 a day. Okay. It's for rapid testing only. Um, it does, it, well, you know what? It rarely happens. We did have a boutique, a black member go crazy on $5 a day recently, but um, it's rare. It's very rare. So then would you say once you're past that rapid testing period and that $5 a day, as you're then setting your budget on different types of campaigns, is it relative to the size of your business, how much inventory you have, how much traffic you're hoping to attract? Like, how do you set the rest of your budget past that? Okay. So yeah, a couple things here. So, <clears throat> all right. So, so let's start back at the beginning. So like we, we, we put up a, a live sale replay. It doesn't have to be a live sale replay, it could be anything, but we put up a live sale replay. We spent $5 a day for the first three days. Mm -hmm. Our click through rate came back in an 8%. So we're golden, right? Like we, we have a lot of confidence that this is in front of the right people. People are engaging in it. They're interested in it. And so we're like, okay, here we go. And we sit there and we watch and we wait until that first hoodie sells. And then that first hoodie sells, right? And then our, and then Facebook reports our return on ad spend. So we sell a $60 hoodie for six bucks. We have a 10 to one return on our ad spend. That doesn't include shipping and that doesn't include cost of goods, by the way. Right. So, and if I have an agency that doesn't include retainer, but so we have a 10 to one return gross on that, on that, that, that hoodie. And so now we're like, okay, here we go. So immediately you say, okay, I sold my first one for a 10 to one. You're immediately going to raise that from five to 10 bucks. And then that's going to give that rocket a little bit you know, more fuel to get a little bit higher. And then our second and third sale are going to come in and those, those come back in at a nine or a 10 to one to return. Well, then you can scale it again to 15 bucks because you know, you know that every dollar you're spending, you're making 10 and that's more than covering your costs and putting a bunch of extra cash in your pocket. So I'm, you're constantly watching that upward trend, right? So like the rocket leaving the launch pad until it gets, you know, getting higher, getting higher, getting higher. You're constantly investing in the upward trend. And then eventually you're going to see that return on ad spend plateau. And so like, it's going to go up, 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 and it's going to go crazy. And you're going to be excited. And you're going to think, you're going to think this is going to last forever. I'm going to go buy a new Ferrari. Well, don't do that because that will plateau that will plateau. And when it does, we're going to ride that trend. We're not going to, we're not going to scale once it plateaus, we're going to stop scaling, but then we're going to ride that trend all the way back down to three, three to one return. And then we're going to turn it off. Okay. That's so helpful to know. Super helpful to know. Have you been curious about running your own Facebook ads? Maybe you've been working with an agency and you're just wanting to bring this project back in house, or maybe you've never run Facebook ads and you simply want to learn how. I am so excited to share this with you guys because this is a question I see almost on a daily basis inside the boutique hub. So Jeff Venn, our ads expert who has run millions and millions of dollars in ads for companies much larger than ours, is bringing you all of his knowledge. Not only does he coach inside of Boutique Hub Black and for many of our members in Retail Bootcamp, now he's taking all of that knowledge and he's put it inside of the Facebook Ads Masterclass. So from everything to understanding how Meta works, a lot of the common struggles that people have with connecting their Facebook ad account and really the A to Z process of what it takes to understand your audiences and setting up the right kind of ads and knowing how to measure success. All of it's covered inside. So I've got it linked up for you today in the show notes. Check out the Facebook ads masterclass. Another, so a lot of this, I just want to make sure everyone listening understands is there's a, a big misconception that when it comes to running ads, we're only talking about online businesses. Yeah. So talk to me about those who are listening who are not an online business, or maybe, you know, they're a brick and mortar and they have an online store, but really their online store isn't what's really driving home the revenue. It's the brick and mortar. How can we use ads in a brick and mortar scenario? Yeah, right. So let me tell you this, <clears throat> a website will never convert as well as a personal relationship, no matter what you do. Mm. Never like a customer walking through your door and smelling the smell and getting to know you and get to talk to you and you be their marriage counselor for 20 minutes. You know how it is. And so like, you know, all of this stuff, right? So a website can't do that. Yeah. Like a website can't replicate that relationship you have with your customer. And so a lot of times I hear 
man, my, my I want to get into online ads. I want to get into online ads, but my brick and mortar produces 85% of my income. Yeah. And, and most of the time, I think that's the wrong question. Mm. What you should say is I want online ads to support awareness of my brick and mortar. And so like, I want more people in my area to know about my brick and mortar and that I have a Saturday sale every Saturday. And I want, I want to line out the door every Saturday. And I want to use online ads for awareness of my brick and mortar. And that's the real thing. And so um, when, when you combine that, when you get your head over that hurdle and you think, and you, and you get rid of that ideology that I can only run Facebook ads for online sales, well, then all of a sudden every week, your boutique becomes the epicenter for shopping, right? So like every single week people are showing up and they're saying, they're saying, man, I'm here to see what Ashley's got this week. I saw that she had a new collection and I'm here. It's Saturday. This is the day I come in. I, I watched her new collection drop this week online and now I'm here. And so you target those as local, you know, local ads and you give them the option to buy online knowing that a bunch of them are going to show up in person. Yeah. So good. Um, all right. Last question when it comes to like misconceptions, because that's really important to know is the brick and mortar piece, all kinds of opportunity there. So if anyone's listening so far and they're like, okay, Jeff, this sounds great, but I don't know, should I do this? Should I have an agency do this? Just give me some perspective on if I was going to hire an agency, what are some things I should know before I get started? How do I make that evaluation if I should do it or have someone else do it? Okay. Yeah. So first off here at the hub, we are not anti-agency, right? Like there are great agencies. There are agencies that I look at their data. Like I review 125 ad accounts a week, by the way, but like, I'll look at some, I'll look at some agencies and, I, and like, I literally think, man, how are they doing that? This is incredible. Yeah. Like, like there are agencies like that. And, um, and I mean, some of them are so spectacular and some of them you can track back and look at the, look at the growth and scale they've provided for that own, you know, for that store owner. And it's amazing and yeah. it's awesome. But then there's other agencies. There's other agencies that aren't like that. There's other agencies that um, are a little bit lazier, don't quite, you know, don't quite perform like they should. And so a couple questions I would ask myself um, is, you know, how often are they maintaining my ad? So in Facebook ad manager, you can, you can go back and, and set a filter for last significant change and it'll show you when the last significant change was and who did it. And then, um, and then, so you can do that. And then the next thing is, is like, you know, ask yourself, like, who's doing the vast majority of the work, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, at the boutique hub, we have a, we have a marketing team. Like we, we have, we have team, we have a, we have a content team and we have people that are producing posts and it makes my life really easy because I can go in and go, Ooh, that's a good post. I'll create that into a net. You don't want your agency doing that. Like you don't want your agency acting like that. You don't want to be like as the store owner, responsible for all the creative and you're putting up all the posts and all they're doing is coming behind you and promoting your posts. If you hire an agency and you're paying them a 2000 or a $5,000 a month retainer, they need to be taking that load off your plate and giving you creative and saying, Hey, Ashley, check this out. This performs really well. You should use this on social as well. And this is an experiment we want. We, we tested your customers respond better to this mm -hmm. and this sells twice as good as this. Use this on your social. And that that's kind of the relationship you want to look out for. Um, there's a couple telltale signs that um, will give you a heads up. If an agency comes in and says, I charge 25% of ad spend, that's a red flag for me because that doesn't hold them accountable for anything that doesn't hold them accountable for performance. Um, and so, you know, those, those, those sort of things, but yeah, make sure that they're, make sure that they're maintaining the account there and they're making changes, uh, you know, a couple times a week, if not daily. Um, and then, you know, make sure that they're providing value back to you and making your life easier and, and, and providing you with creative and providing you with, uh, advice and strategy and metrics and, um, and reporting like monthly reporting. If you're getting your report typed out on a typewriter delivered to you once every other month, time, time to look around. Such good points, such good points. And I, I mean, going back to the agency fee too, I think you have to evaluate at some point, am I getting the return on the investment from this agency fee specifically? Or at what point do I take that money and invest it into my own staff and then bring that ad, you know, performance and ad creative and everything back in house and train myself. Yes, how to no. do it. 
So, you know, like when you drive around your neighborhood and you see like the one lawn that's like perfectly green with perfect stripes and it's fertilized early every year and it's perfectly edged and there's beautiful flowers in the beds and all that stuff. That guy doesn't have a corporation maintaining his lawn. He does it himself. And so if you have the opportunity, if you have a staff member that has the interest, bring it in house. Mm. That would be my advice. Nobody will take care of your lawn better than you. Such good advice. All right. So someone who's listening is probably thinking, all right, Jeff, I need some help with my reporting. Again, I want to evaluate like what's working, what's not. But I think in, before we have that conversation, Jeff, before we get into reporting, maybe let's back up a step and just highlight the fact that not all ads are created equal. Not all ads are the same. If someone's new to ads, it's not like there's just one type that you're going to set it and forget it. Can you kind of explain overall like a funnel and maybe what ads fall at different parts of the funnel? So what you're going to evaluate first if you're new to ads? Yeah. So we'll jump, we'll jump into the funnel for just a second, but you just, you just made my ears ring a little bit. So like the, uh, so not all ads are created equal is a good point. So like, let's talk about that for just a sec before we get into the, the, the overall funnel. Um, nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows what type of ads will sell. Nobody. Mm. Nobody. What sells is experiments. And so, um, and so like if, if, if you're running an ad campaign and you have one creative in there and it's, it's one, uh, uh, one flat lay image and you, you, you launch that ad and you spent a thousand bucks on it and, and, and you didn't make any money. The, the, the problem is, is there's no experimentation there. You bet a hundred percent of your chips on one horse, like you have to load the horses across the track. Like you have to like put six, eight, 10, 10 different types of ads inside your ad campaign. Go, I, and just admit, yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea what they're going to buy off of, but I know I've got my bases covered and load them all up. Give them every type of ad you can think of and then watch them for two weeks and see which one wins. Cancel the rest. So anyway, so that's what that reminded me of is, um, there is, not all ads are created equal, but on the flip side of that, nobody knows. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you have a guru come in and say, I would be the one, actually, I'd be the one to come in and say, oh yeah, short format video is the best there ever is. And you've probably heard me say it, but the, but the, uh, but um, like, if you have a guru come in and say, this is it, this is going to change the world. I've said that too, but the, uh, but anyway, so um, like if, if you come in and you say that sort of thing, I mean, nobody knows. Nobody does. Okay. So that's that. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a, a cautionary tale. I feel like uh, ads is just glorified gambling. Truly. It's what it is. Okay. And it's like going to the craps table with Jeff and at midnight in Las Vegas. Like you just never know what's going to happen. Red or black. I can, I tell, you, I, I can tell you what's going to happen. You're going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, all right. So let's go through the overall um, sales funnel and the objectives behind those. Yeah. Right. So I break this down really simple in the Facebook ads masterclass and every single day inside of Boutique of Black. Those are the, I, those are the two programs I kind of head up. But anyway, so in, inside a paid campaign or an organic campaign, this isn't just for ads, by the way. This is how you want to think about your buyer experience, your customer experience. Mm -hmm. Is The first layer is top of funnel. The second layer is middle of funnel. And the, bottom of, the third layer is bottom of funnel. So top of funnel. Right. So top of funnel is the, the question you're asking yourself is how am I going to attract this big net? How am I going to attract this big group of people just to my brand? Like, how am I just, how am I just going to get an eyeball on, on my video and then look to see if they engage with it or watch it? That's all. That's all you're doing. That's what, a, that's what a top of funnel is, is how do I attract new shoppers to, to my store? Facebook does that really, really, really well with video and like you can say, okay, I posted this video, this many people watched it. I'm going to retarget them in the middle of the funnel. Google does it. Um, Google has a filter actually that says only target my ad to new people and you just turn it on and it'll only send it to new people, which is kind of cool. But anyway, so that's top of funnel, right? So like I'm, I, I'm going to put up my live sale video. You know, I want, I want to just get this in front of new people. I'm going to exclude I'm going to exclude my web page visitors. I don't want to count them. I want to just know the new fish that come into my net. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's top of funnel. That's the, that's the, that's the very top. And, if, and on the organic side, you want to keep that in mind too. So like, if you have a group, like if you, if you have just a group, like a buyer's group and you're only posting in that buyer's group and the only people that see those posts are the, are the people that are already members of that group, you're not, you don't have a top of funnel. Like you don't have one. 
Mm -hmm. Because you would have to go on your page and post organic stuff or write blog articles on your web page or, you know, get ranked on Google to attract the top of funnel organically. So just keep that in mind. Like what organic content am I doing? Am I posting this on my public page to, to bring in new eyeballs, that sort of thing? What hashtags am I using mm -hmm. to attract new eyeballs, that sort of thing? What Pinterest posts, you know, what collection, what collection did I put up on Pinterest to attract new people for the first day? So organically, that's the top of funnel. Like, how do I attract new people? Then middle of funnel is once I see that they have engaged with me this much, like how, even if they only engaged with me one minute, even if they only watched 10% of my live video, how do I remind them that I exist? Yeah. How do I remind them that I'm still here, that I'm still in business, that I just got a new collection, right? That I just went to market. And I picked out something just for them. How do I, how do I show them that the items that I just shopped at market look like something that, that they would wear? That's middle of funnel. It's just like taking, taking that person from, oh yeah, I watched her live video the other night. Oh, wow. She picked out something I like. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And then you sell them that product. Obviously yeah. you sell them the product they like. And so that's middle of funnel. Um, just remind them you exist and sell them for the first time. And then bottom of funnel is reselling. So you're going to sell to the buyers again, or, or you're going to, you're going to take those people that got all the way to the cart and started their payment checkout and left for some reason. You're going to remind them that the item they loved is still available. Do you think like when you're evaluating where to start, like which part of the funnel do I attack first? Would you say, you know, you're already doing all this work to attract everyone organically through day-to-day -day social media. And 98% of them are bouncing off of your website as it is. You're getting a 2% conversion rate. So do you start with the retargeting side of things? Do you start with bottom of funnel and start cleaning up that leaky bucket first with ads and then go back to warm and top of funnel? Yes, yeah, so it depends. It, it depends. So in Facebook Business Manager, um, Meta Business Suite, you can go in there and see the health of those individual funnels. If you've had your pixel on your page for a little while, mm -hmm. You can go in there and you can say, you, you can go right into events manager inside Meta Business Suite and it'll tell you, hey, Ashley, did you know that you've had 2,100 people add to cart that have not checked out? Mm -hmm. And if you have an audience like that, actually 250 is the cutoff. 250 people is the cutoff. So if your add to cart pixel has 2,100 people in it, that's your lowest hanging fruit, right? Go back and push them off the edge. Mm -hmm. Like that's a terrible way to say it, but the, uh, um, but the go back, you know, go back and encourage them to finish their, go, go back and, uh, encourage them to finish their, uh, purchase. Yeah. And so that's your lowest hanging fruit. Now, if you have an app, if you just installed your pixel yesterday, if you're a new boutique, you can't do that. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work or vice versa. If, if you go into a meta business suite and you look at your events manager and your purchase pixel, the number of people that have purchased is you know below 250 people mm -hmm. you're like you're going to you're going to have a hard time you go, you got to start at top of funnel because you have to attract more new people to your page and let them make their way through that funnel and actually purchase to fill up that purchase pixel so that Facebook can target the right people and so it's a complicated situation if you're new start with top of funnel if if you're seasoned and you go into meta business uh, manager and event manager and see that you have all these people in your add to cart or all these people on your page view or all these people in your purchase you can start at the bottom of funnel okay man that's yep. super helpful to know um i feel like anyone who's listening today probably wrote a book of notes i think this was so good this was so helpful um i was going to dig into reporting but honestly i think we could probably go for another hour just on reporting alone so Jeff, let's do this. Um, if anyone listening wants to learn more, can you let them know kind of where you're at and what you work on, where people can find you? Well, actually, you know, I've been told multiple times I'm hard to track down. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, multiple times, actually several times yesterday. But the uh, but uh, but so yeah, so obviously I work with the boutique hub, and so I run. I, I'm in charge of um, boutique hub black inside um, the boutique hub. The bo boutique hub black is like this. Um, kind of one-on-one -on -one guidance through the marketing world for boutiques and home and gift store owners. And so what we do in there is we have a weekly session that's a group session. Usually those are global topics like, hey guys, what what updates did Facebook make this week? <laughs> or like, or uh, how many of you guys violated this policy this week? Here's how to fix it. So every Wednesday, those are global topics. And then we, we do things like chat GPT optimization and SEO and all sorts of stuff on those, but they're global topics. 
And then usually once a week or once every other week for the first few weeks while you're getting up and going, you and I meet one on one and we set up your first ad account. I build out the top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel with you. We launch that together. We audit that together and we optimize it together so that you get your feet wet with me at your side. And so that's been really, really rewarding um, for not only me, but for, for the members that have done it and the people that are committed. I mean, the results are crazy. Yeah. And then if you're not quite ready for that, if you're not quite ready for that, there's a program that we did that's a, that's a um, learn at your own pace uh, masterclass. Yeah. And so the, in that, I take that same system that we teach in Boutique Hub Black, and I just recorded it step by step to the best of my ability. It's a it's an organic document where I've already added several times to it. Um, we launched it once. I added hundreds of things to it. And since then, I've added several more. But um, and so um, it's an organic document. It continues to grow as Facebook changes and as our, our members give us feedback. Um, but that is a that is a step by step method, how to check your bended business manager, how to make sure your pixel set up, how to qualify your account for ads, how to make sure you're ready. And then how to launch your top of funnel, how to launch your bottom of funnel, how to launch your, um, you know, your different layers, and then how to audit how to audit your account to make sure, mm -hmm. um, you know, how to make sure you're ready. And so uh, that's kind of a, if you're not quite ready for Boutique Black, that's, um, you know, that's a preliminary step. And then I coach in RBC too, as well. And so if you're not part of RBC, sign up, it's a no brainer. RBC is the stepping stone to success. And so um, I, we have another semester coming up here in June. And so keep your eyes out for that. Yeah, so good. So guys, I'll link that up for you in the show notes. Uh, more information on Boutique Black. More importantly, the Facebook Ads Masterclass, which I think is so important to have that like baseline knowledge so that you can come into Boutique Hub Black ready to go. But then above all of that, Retail Bootcamp, I, really, this is interesting, Jeff. So one of the main reasons I started Retail Bootcamp, however many years ago it's been now, what are we at? Seven, eight years when we first started that? Started, yeah. It's been a while. But the whole reason we started that is I had so many people come and say, I want to do Facebook ads, but they didn't have the right inventory. They didn't have a great operating business. They really weren't hitting the right customers. I feel like there's so many things in, in your business you have to have set up. And then ads is like pouring some gasoline on the fire. Like that's how you make it grow. But there's other things you also have to have in place. So retail bootcamp is like college for boutique owners and home and gift store owners to make sure your business is ready. So we'll link up all those options in the show notes. Jeff, thanks so much for this today. You didn't say leopard pants one time. In any I know. I'm analogies. telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, these, uh, you know, all these boutique owners and home and gift store owners have taught me a thing or two. <laughs> Moving on to the next trend. I love it. All right, Jeff M. Thanks so much. Appreciate you as always. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you took away all kinds of nuggets and new ideas from this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating and review. We love to hear your feedback and give you a chance to be featured on the show each and every week. For more information on our spirit of community over competition and to access guest downloads and bonuses and all the resources we talked about on the show, head on over to theboutiquehub.com and join the community. We'll see you next week.